Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. And today, I wanted to spark some discussion on Frank Clark. Uh, Frank Clark, as you guys know, is a player that I think I can safely say I've probably been the most critical of out of the entire fan base. Like, if you guys have followed me on Twitter, uh, watched my YouTube videos for a while, you know I am, I've been at the forefront of Frank Clark needs to go. But today, I'm here to give Frank Clark his credit. And I actually gave him his credit um, over the past couple games individually in my post games after those games. I also talked about it with uh, Michael Darcy on his channel when we did our recent review of the Chiefs Packers game too. So look, I I've given Frank Clark the credit that he deserves for his performance as of lately. And now a discussion that I've seen pop up throughout the fan base is what if Frank Clark keeps playing like this and I wrote about this too on arrowheadaddict.com and this is going to kind of be a video version of everything I went over in that article but if you're interested in reading it after this go check it out I'll link it in the description but uh anyway so what if Frank Clark keeps playing like this like he's finally play okay here's what I'll say going into this season the expectations were so low for Frank Clark um, the fan base was very down on him. He had his legal issues. He was coming off another disappointing season. And look, the expectations for him were really low. And I think a lot of us went into the season with the mentality that, hey, you know, anything that Frank Clark gives you is a bonus because he's just been that bad lately. So anything he gives you is gravy. We were planning on him being a disappointment anyway. So now that he's actually producing, uh, you know, it, you, you got to feel pretty good, right? I mean, over the last two games, five total tackles, a tackle for a loss, four QB hits in the sack, um, and he's had some decent pressure rates in those two games as well. So, you know, you like to see that. That's steadily improving from where we were in the past with Frank Clark. And I think Frank Clark is a lot of the reason the Chiefs defense has been playing well. Um, in my opinion, you know, if this defense was ever going to take a step forward, it was probably going to be because of the pass rush and the pass rush stepping up because we can acknowledge that the secondary, um, you know, it's decent. It can get the job done, but you wouldn't say it's a spectacular secondary. They got some pieces like um, Tyron and Thornhill and Sneed. Um, Ward is okay, and they're still giving Dan Sorensen some snaps, which isn't great. So, I mean, the secondary, it's up and down, but, you know, it's fine. Um, linebackers, I, you know, I think they're a steadily improving unit. They've injected some talent in there recently with Willie Gay and Nick Bolton, but I think a lot of us were still pretty wary of the linebacker group and what it was going to look like. They did not play well to begin the season. A lot of that was because Willie Gay was out, but the defensive line was a strength for this team. I think a lot of us thought the coaching staff certainly thought that um, the defensive line is it's got a quarter of the team's cap space invested in it. It was thought to be deep. So it was very disappointing and very demoralizing when they just could not get a lack of pressure on anyone. And they went up against some pretty poor offensive lines to begin the season too, and still could not generate any pressure. Um, so if this defense was ever going to take a step forward, it was going to be because of the pass rush stepping up. And if the pass rush was ever going to step up, it would be because Frank Clark would be resembling a competent pass rusher once again. And that's exactly what's happened the past few weeks. And now the scenario that a lot of people never thought would unfold is unfolding, or at least the conversation is now being brought to the table of, do the Chiefs have a tough decision to make at the end of the season with Frank Clark? And people are just asking the general question of, you know, what does this mean if Frank Clark keeps playing like this? When it comes to the on the field results, you know, I think it's pretty obvious, you know, that's good that the Chiefs would be getting a decent Frank Clark. Now, I don't need to go into great detail. I mean... Frank Clark playing good means nothing but good things for the Chiefs. And add in the fact that Melvin Ingram looks to be a good, viable third pass rusher um, that has allowed Chris Jones to move back to the middle. You now have this pass rushing trio of Ingram, Clark, and Jones. And Ingram is probably the best pass rushing partner that Clark has had from the other edge spot since he's been here. I mean, besides Ingram, you know, who is, who's Clark had on the other side to take some attention away from him and, you know, open things up for him? You know, Emmanuel Ogba, maybe, for like 10 games in 2019. So, yeah, the Chiefs have struggled for a while to find another legitimate pass rusher 
veteran pass rusher to put on this defensive line. And uh, they look to have found it in Ingram, so that's a really positive aspect of all of this. Now let's talk about Clark's future in Kansas City. Does the assumption that he's gone, no matter what, after the season remain if he continues to play like this? Unfortunately, I'm going to play Debbie Downer. I'm going to play realist here and say that he's still gone. I mean, he has to go, guys. Even if he continues this pace all the way to the end of the season, he has to go. Reason number one, the savings from Cunning Clark is just too high. And his cap hit actually continues to rise after this year. His cap hit is right over uh, $25 million this year. It goes up over $26 million next year. It goes up to $27 million the year after that. Like, it is bad, guys. You got to cut Clark, okay? Um, even though, and look, even though he's been playing better lately, I think people need to relax a little bit because he still has performed like a replacement level defensive end, which is what the chiefs need out of him at this point. You know, that's the best you could probably hope for as a replacement level defensive end. He still isn't performing up to his contract. I mean, he's getting paid top five quarterback money. You cannot keep Frank Clark around at top five quarterback money. It's just, you can't do it. And it's worth noting that his last two matchups, the Packers without David Bakhtiari and Jordan Love at quarterback, and then there was also the Giants, who are one of the worst offensive line units in the entire league. That Those are the two teams that Frank Clark's good performances have come against in recent weeks. And, you know, he played a little bit better against the Titans, too, but that game was over by the second half. The Titans put it on cruise control. I don't take a whole lot from that game. So... Again, even though Clark deserves his credit for playing better than he has been as of recently in Kansas City, we still need to acknowledge he's not performing up to his cap hit, and he still isn't performing the way Chiefs fans maybe once hoped. When they traded for him and signed him to that contract, they would hope he would be a Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, TJ Watt type player, and he's not even close to any of those guys. Here's another thing, too. You cannot decide Clark's fate over these next eight, nine games, whatever, how many it is. And then there's the postseason too, assuming the Chiefs make it. You cannot just look at those games and if Clark plays at this current pace, go, oh, well, maybe we need to keep him around now. No, you'd essentially be making the same mistake twice with Frank Clark. You already made that mistake the first time when he had a few good years in Seattle and then you acquired him and paid him all that money. So you can't just... When his, when his sample size of bad football has outweighed his sample size of good football still here in Kansas City, you can't just pay him again based on that or decide to keep him around or all of a sudden decide that he's worth his contract because he's not, and he's not going to be. Everyone knew, and Frank Clark knew this too, that this was a contract year for him in Kansas City. Even though he has a few years left on his contract with the savings that were lining up um, for the Chiefs that they cut Frank Clark next year and the way he had been performing – Everyone knew this was a year that Clark had to play well just to put some good tape out there for his next team. And, you know, it was it was a contract year for him. You know, we all know what the contract year means for players. So if Clark plays the rest of the year out pretty well, let's just say hypothetically the Chiefs decided to extend him. Well, how do we know that after that he doesn't go right back to the way he was when he got his first big deal? How do we know that he's not just putting on for his contract year? For those of you that are hoping that Clark figures it out and are hoping that somehow he stays in Kansas City after this year, here's the best case scenario I could see happening if Clark continues to play the way he has. Remember this past offseason when the Seahawks cut Carlos Dunlap and then they brought him back on a much more team-friendly deal and Dunlap was willing to work with them and didn't really talk to too many other teams? Um, That's what the Chiefs would have to hope happens with Frank Clark they cut him both sides know that he's making way too much and there's too much savings to be had if they don't cut him so they cut him and bring him back on a new deal for a couple years um, at a much lesser number like maybe seven or eight million per year something like that you know even though I don't even really think Clark is worth that much uh, you know I, I think the highest I'd be willing to go is like five or six maybe those are my thoughts yeah, I, at least at this point in the season, the conversation is 
what do the Chiefs do with Frank Clark at the end of the year as opposed to how quickly can the Chiefs cut Frank Clark because that's what it was before. But yeah, with all that being said, I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Frank Clark as of lately? And do you think there's a chance the Chiefs keep him at the end of the year if he keeps playing like this? Would love to hear from you guys. Let's get some debate going. Uh, Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And lastly, make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com. See ya.